Hi Pisces, welcome to your 2020 forecast. Everything you need to know about this reading is in the description box below, as well as the recommend a reader shout out, which goes to Tarot of Light. Love and support to her. Check her out, show her some love and support. This is intended to be, or to focus on uh, the romantic aspect of your 2020 for you, but it's a pretty deep dive, well, it is, but it isn't. There's one spread and then I go into a mini month by month spread. So it's kind of a deep dive and other things are bound to come up. So just keep that in mind. All right, Pisces, Pisces. What do got for Pisces? Pisces for 2020 Pisces. Six of cups, okay. <laughs> okay, so we've got um, Ace of Cups, Ten of Wands, miles and miles to go before we rest, Three of Cups, Three of Swords, Justice, One, Two, Three, Oof. Nine of Cups, The Wheel of Fortune. All right, so this was an issue. You've been dealing with somebody that it's, when it was good, it was really good. When it was bad, it was really bad. And we've got frustration with this. And we've got things used to be and how do we get back to that? Like there's, you're still connected. Hmm. So is this what you want for your, what do you, what do you want here? You're trying to, you're, you're wanting to keep your happy and you're wanting things to make a turn for the better. So while you still might be thinking about this and frustrated, you are trying for change. You are hoping for change. You do want to see yourself move forward from this situation. So what's this Ace of Cups about for Pisces 2020-20? This Ace of Cups for Pisces. Magician, Gemini, Virgo, or Aries. All right. This is Ten of Wands. Ten of Wands. So you've been blaming yourself a lot, or you've been kind of in your cups, so to speak, but like emotionally thinking, um, not stuck in the past, but I think you've been kind of beating yourself up for how you are or where you've been or some stupid choices you've made or something like that. Something along that line or those lines. And <clears throat> don't, if you are, stop it because you've got a very busy year ahead of you and you need to focus on your well-being as well as staying active and productive in mind. Um, you've got a lot of options for you that are yours for the taking. Should you put forth the effort and make them happen, you might um, that might show up later in the month by month. What's this Three of Cups about? It's Three of Cups for Pisces. Is it? Okay, so that's two, all right. Knight of Cups. Okay. So this is about looking to the future and making your own future happen instead of waiting around for someone to either figure out how to make it happen for you or you kind of figuring out. The focus needs to shift away from finding this relationship or partnership or regressing and thinking about that one that got away to looking to the future and looking at the options that you have for you in front of you. And to do that, you need to grieve. You need to let go. This good change is not going to happen unless there's, because it's like you, you kind of reminisce a little bit about here. And then when that starts to get kind of painful or hard, um, you might think about, well, that you go into the bargaining stage. Like, so you're reminiscing, but then it starts to get kind of painful. So then you go into the bargaining stage. Well, what if I did this? Well, what if they did that? What if, uh, no, and round and round you go. This needs to be dealt with. 
What's this Three of Swords? What's this Three of Swords? Yeah. You're, you don't shy away from feeling all the feels, but there is a reluctance to it because it hurts, which makes sense. So you just, you're trying to spare your feelings, but you might be keeping yourself stuck. Just keep an eye out for that, for old patterns emerging. I just don't like that you're like blaming yourself. And that might be an attempt to establish control over the situation. Like, well, if I blame myself, then that means I can also fix it. And then I can exalt myself. You know what I mean? All right. What's this tower card? But the, the answer is not doing either. It's, it's a process in letting go. And it's hard. Um, and you, but you're able to, you don't shy away from it. It's just that it's not pleasant. You, you'll go there, you'll, you'll feel the feels, you'll do what needs to be done. It's just that you'd much rather negotiate all the other stuff than have to go there because it hurts. And there's a finality to it. When you finally start hurting and feeling it, there's a finality to that. There's that knowing that, wow, this is actually happening. I can't go back now because I can't not know what I know. What's this justice about? What's justice about? All right, so in dealing with this in this past year of trying to figure out how to find love anew, but you kind of sometimes backslide and you think about your past relationship, the one that may have gotten away, and there's a bit of like beating yourself up for it because, you know, if, maybe if I wasn't this way or, oh, I got in my own way again. Like you're kind of blaming yourself and like your own issues for getting in the way of having healthy relationships. Some of you don't do that. Um, that's pointless. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. But it's not about that so much. It's That is just a, a tactic to keep you dealing from the reality of the present situation, which is whatever it was, it ended. And this is about grieving and moving forward, letting go and moving forward as best you can. Because you're, you've got a lot of things waiting to happen for you, but they're not going to happen to you. They're going to happen for you when you initiate and move forward and make them happen. So stop beating yourself up and stop negotiating what could have been if maybe this or if you did it, if they come back or if I come back. Uh-uh. And it could be since that relationship, you might have found difficulty in opening up to someone else or even being interested in dating. And it's because you might even not realize it, but you might be holding out hope for this person to return or for something to just fall into your lap without you having to make any effort whatsoever. And that could very well happen. But even if it did, this right here shows that you wouldn't be in a place to receive it um, because you're, you're kind of closed off or you're not, you're just not ready for it to happen. You're, you're still thinking about this, wanting something to fall into your lap to take you away from thinking about that. And that it's, nobody's going to do that because you're not energetically, you're not open for anything new anyway. Um, until you process it and you grieve. And you, you're not afraid of going there and feeling that. It's just not pleasant. But thing, things are as they should be. And this is about balance. And right now it's kind of heavy one way because you're, you're still negotiating and giving a lot of energetic weight to it. You need to free that up and be in charge of your own destiny for the future, of your own choices for the future. <clears throat> Excuse me. What's this nine of cups about? Well, there's your future, the destiny for your future happiness. What's this nine of cups about? <laughs> destiny for your future. What does that mean? Point is, um, be in charge of your future, making it happen for yourself. Knight of swords, making happiness happen for you, being in charge of your own happiness. That needs to be your focus then. It needs to shift from the past to your future and being happy and being in charge and taking action uh, for your own happiness. That's This could be Aquarius. What's this Wheel of Fortune about for Pisces? What's this Wheel of Fortune? Five of Swords. It, this feels like making your own luck. This feels like being, like literally making your own luck because we've got things needing to finally, well, it could be you needing to cut away some things to make room for the good luck and the good, the happy, 
But this also has this element of things happen that strip away what has been holding you back. So it's a little bit of both. It's a little bit of you being open and taking some initiative and moving forward and not focusing on the past. And it's also, you know, you're, you get in your wish, maybe something does fall in your lap. But it isn't going to happen or it, if even if it does, it's not going to, you're not going to be ready for it. So you, regardless of whether it happens or not, you need to start taking those energetic steps, not steps energetically, but you need to start taking steps, especially in the energetic realm of releasing the past for you, letting yourself off the hook so that you can move forward and be in charge of your own happiness. And then the rest will fall into place. But this is about a little bit of you deciding to be open to your good that's coming and a little bit of your luck turning for the better that helps you prune away the stuff you no longer need from the past for 2020. Okay, so I want to get, wait a minute. Yeah, I did that right. No? Okay, there we go. Now comes the other reading. So, so we've got the Ace of Cups, Wheel of Fortune, and the Nine of Cups. So this is uh, things taking a turn for the better in 2020, because this has been kind of a heavy year for you. So, let's see here. All right. Pisces, January 2020. Pisces, January 2020. Whoopsie. Emperor, that could be Aries. February 2020, Pisces. February 2020. The World, March 2020, Pisces. March. Let's do this. Ten of Pentacles. April 2020, Pisces. Whoopsie. What's that? Oh, Six of Cups reversed. Having trouble letting go. Um, clinging to what once was. Being unrealistic, perhaps. What else for Pisces? April 2020. Four of Wands. Okay. May. 2020 Pisces. Death, June 2020 for Pisces. This could be Scorpio, Aries. This is Aries. June 2020 for Pisces. Chariot, that could be Cancerian. July 2020 for Pisces. July 2020. Ace of Cups, nice. What else for Pisces, August 2020? Let's see. Pisces, August. The Knight of Swords. September 2020, Pisces, September. King of Swords. So this could be Aquarius, this could be Gemini. October 2020, Pisces. October. October. <laughs> Wheel of Fortune, November 2020, Pisces, November. 2020, Pisces, November. Six of Pentacles. December 2020, Pisces, December. Two of... Oh. <laughs> Two of Cups. <laughs> well, okay then. <laughs> Pisces, December 2020. That took me by surprise there. All right, first four months for Pisces. First four months. What do we got here? Pisces, first four months. Pisces, first third of 2024, Pisces. The Chariot. You could be dealing with a Cancerian. If not that, it is a Cancerian, um, or that's Zodiac sign would be Cancerian. This is, and we got the Sunflower there. Um, this is forward movement, force of will, assertion, victory. We got that here showing up in June also. 
Interesting. All right. Middle of the year, May through August for Pisces. Middle of the year, May through August, Pisces. Huh? Ten of Cups. All right. Go Pisces. Okay, so that's some. We got falling in love here, or we got love happening. Okay. Oh. Last four months of the year for Pisces. Last four months. I see last four months. <laughs> the magician. Okay. So making things happen, and you can't see that. All right. Let's do this. Making things happen. Nice. Gemini, Virgo, or Aries. Okay. So this was this deck. Okay. So I'm going to use this one to clarify. What's this emperor about in January for Pisces? Emperor. January Pisces. Judgment. All right. So this, you know, the review of the past does have its advantages, but staying stuck there, beating yourself up for it, just staying stuck in a negative loop, not so much. But January has you reviewing the past and wanting to see what you can learn from it, establishing some control starts off very good. Uh, January is a good start because it, you, because of what you've learned from the past, you're in control. Uh, if you are, if this is somebody asking for a decision about what to do about a relationship, whether it's reconciliation or if you want to take it to the next level, it looks like you're thinking about it. It looks like you're not making any decisions. It looks like your focus is on whether it will be st uh, stable enough for you, whether it will have the stability and the longevity that you want and whether you'll be able to be, to have some efficacy in that, like, do you matter? Are you, you know, are you, is this somebody that values your input and your time? All of that. So looks like you spend the month thinking about that. Hold on a minute here, there we go. Almost lost that one. Um, so January is kind of a thinking month for you. And then we have February. You're really wanting, you're, you're really deliberate. This, there's a real focus on the past here, but it's shifting from you beating yourself up and lamenting about coulda, woulda, shoulda to learning from it and reestablishing, reinvigorating, re, re, re everything um, for the new year. What's this world card about for Pisces? What's this world card about? Page of Pentacles. So we got the world here, Page of Pentacles. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. What's March 10 of Pentacles about for Pisces? Seven of Swords. So we're, what is this? Okay, so it looks like you're not Either you're thinking about the past and you're using it to inform your decisions and start you off on the right foot in, in January, or this is someone coming asking for a decision, which you decide against. You're not getting back together with anybody. You're looking towards a future. You want it, things are over. You feel good about it. New year. I like my chances. I want to learn new things. I want to learn new people. I want to do new things. I want to do new stuff. So this is you beginning to embark on a new trajectory, out with the old, in with the new, having to be careful about it. So. For March, there could be um, some issues of having to be really careful and strategic with your money, um, particularly with your future, maybe some investments. But if we're talking about a relationship, be careful and be strategic and, and you might have to be careful. I just, I, I don't feel like this is finding out anything, but I feel like there's month, a month. March is a month of you having to kind of, uh, happy birthday, by the way. Um, having to navigate with stealth and with care, being strategic with your information. It's, it's, this could be just a, a planning month for you, what it looks like for you to get your affairs in order. Now that this has ended, you've decided not to reconcile. This could be taking care of some business, dealing with maybe the house or shared property, getting your stuff back, figuring out where you're going to live, where you're going to move. Lots of decisions to be made that you are doing solo, you're doing independently because you've got this new beginning starting on a new trajectory in February. We got this Four of Wands. What's this Four of Wands about for 
March for, no, April for Pis uh, Pisces. April 2020 Pisces, Four of Wands. What's that? Ah, Ten of Wands and the Four of Wands. So that's, again, this is like, you know what? I'm taking a breather from this relationship. I'm going solo because this is, again, it's like you're reviewing the past. It was a lot of work, this relationship being in partnership with this particular person and even in general it might just not be of interest to you because miles and miles to go before we get to go to sleep their house there in the distance and yet you can't stop you got to carry this load and you're tired and you want to set it down and it's like oh god this there's a lot of work and being communal with someone and you're just really not feeling it anymore and so this is you figuring out what you want and moving ahead for yourself this is not you in connection with anyone this is getting your affairs in order after you decide to leave a connection in um, the first third of the year then we have may and we enter into ten of cups so that's a shift that's happiness but is it, is it with somebody what's this in may of 2020 for pisces what's this death card about for pisces may 2020 five of swords Ooh. Okay, so May, we have you making some decisions. Things have changed. You've come full circle about something. You can't go back to the way you used to feel. You're just, there, something about this month was really um, kind of a paradigm shift because here you are starting off on your own and then it's like now that you've got your own, you're up and running on your own, you're like, boy, that really was kind of hard. That was a lot of work. And oh, I just kind of want to fly solo by myself. And I just want to be able to make decisions for myself. I just, I, things have changed. I don't, I don't need certain things anymore. I don't want to have to do certain things anymore. So then we come to June. It can be Cancerian. That's Chariot. June for Pisces 2020. What's this Chariot about? Wow what 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 just happened i don't think this is you working hard for a communal connection or putting a lot of the work in this feels like you just left something unless we've got you choosing to be with someone else while you're still dealing with the um connection with your other with what what what's this ten of wands and this four of wands about because we've got you ending things. Do you meet somebody? What, what is this two of, or is this you in pursuit of somebody? Because you, we got, what's this two of cups and the chariot about? What is going on here? Queen of Pentacles, that could be Capricorn, but this is being this is a good partner this whoever this is this is a good partner is this you wanting to set a course of action to find a good partner to find love is that what this is or do you meet somebody either way something happens in june uh this look okay so we for the first part of that reading remember how i said well it's half and half like half of it is you being open energetically that's what this is. This is you setting yourself up to be open energetically to get that partnership. But it also was a little bit of something falling in your lap or something coming to you. And it looks like that's what's happening here in June. <laughs> okay. What's this in there? Ace of Cups. Okie dokie. So what's this Ace of Cups about in July? So we've got, is this meeting someone that is really nurturing that is a good partner in June and wanting to meet that person, like setting and then all of a sudden, I mean, that's the intention here, right? What's this Ace of Cups about for July for Pisces? Ace of Cups, July. Okay, we got the Two of Pentacles. But what, it, why are you juggling? Is it, the, are you, oh, okay, are we adjusting? We're adjusting to this new normal because we were decidedly against connection with this person. We were over it and done with it. This, somebody shows up. It's, I don't feel like it's your person of old. This is somebody new shows up in June. We got you adjusting to a new normal. 
I don't think this is cheating. I really don't. I don't think you're involved with your old person and then your um, new person and you're juggling between the two. I don't think it's that. I think that this is a real adjustment because this was a lot. It was a lot. It was very heavy. And you could see that from the first reading because you were energetically still there and wanting something to kind of happen to you to get you out of that energy. And it's like, nope, got to do it yourself. I mean, you got to set the, that in motion and then, then it, something can happen. Well, it did. Now you're adjusting to it. <laughs> now you're like, oh my God. So this is July and adjusting to that. What's this Knight of Swords? That could be Gemini. What's this Knight of Swords for Pisces? The Magician, Gemini, Virgo, or Aries. Okay, so here we are in August and things are happening pretty quickly and be careful because it looks like you're kind of taking it upon yourself to figure out how to do this and to maintain control. And You don't need to do that with this person. You don't need to do that with this person. Your focus and you've, whatever you've set in motion energetically, you've attracted a different type of person. So you don't need to get out there ahead of it, in front of it, and figure out how it's gonna work and try to get to, so just watch for that in August that you might, there it might be kind of like push, pull, stop, start because you might be reacting to old behavior patterns and you don't need to. You don't need to try and control it. You don't need to get out there and try to figure out how it's going to work and make it how you don't need to. You've got somebody that is just as interested in partnership as you are. So that's the, okay. Yeah, you don't need to force anything here. You don't need to try and manage or control or make sure that someone's not going to let you down. So just watch out for August. Don't, don't get ahead of yourself. What's this King of Swords here for Pisces? Okay, so this this Ten of Cups right here would fall in line with you meeting somebody new um, for the, the second or the middle four months of 2020. Then we come to the last four months of 2020, which is the Magician. And that's where you left off here in August before you got to the last four months. So, whoa, Nelly, slow down. <laughs> uh, it could feel like, oh, wow, everything's happening so fast and coming alive and we're going to do all the things. That's okay. Just don't feel like it's a solo mission, like you have to be the one in charge. What's this King of Swords? What's this King of Swords about for Pisces? September, the devil, that could be Capricorn. Revisiting the past here, getting assertive. What the, all right, September is a month of you quite possibly having to be on your guard and be assertive. Where's like, kind of like this right here, kind of like March. So September and March are kind of months where you have to be on guard, where you have to be pretty assertive and diligent about um, truthful information. Like, are you getting the whole story from somebody? This could also be needing to deal with some things, um, either from your past person, suddenly they come up, or this could be old behavior patterns. Now that the newness is worn off and you really like this person and you're wanting to figure out what to do, it could be that you might even not knowingly revert to old behavior patterns of relating and it's like you need to check that. You need to look at that with um, objectivity and be willing to see the truth of what it is so that you can manage those issues so it doesn't, uh, in your mind, ruin the relationship. Not that it did, it always takes two. But uh, you're being a little hard on yourself here and because of this, this newfound love and energy, here you are trying to get out there and manage it and control it and do it. What are we going to do? You don't need to do that. It's going to cause problems because that's the old way you used to have to be to maintain the last relationship. You don't need to do that. It's going to get in the way of this one if you don't look at this objectively and come up with some solutions to manage it. All right. Capricorn, um, Gemini. What's this Wheel of Fortune for October? So um, August and September are months where things might be a little like, whoa, I've got to figure a few things out. I was not expecting this. I'm adjusting. It's a learning curve. Okay, give me a minute. Let me let me figure out what I need to do here. And this feels like you're kind of withdrawing from this person that you found. So it could be that there's um, hmm, maybe there's maybe they have to be away for work. Maybe there's a location issue. Perhaps you meet this person online, and you're not quite in proximity, and it is an adjustment. A lot of time spent communicating. Um, 
maybe some insecurities are coming in. That's why you want to get out there and manage this because you don't want the insecurities to set in from the past. But it's about keeping, I was going to say keeping the air clean, but keeping that communication open with this person. It's just Wheel of Fortune for Pisces for October 2020. Pisces, October. Queen of Cups, that could be Cancerian. All right. What's, why is this ending though? So as soon as it comes in, you meet somebody, but wait a minute, I don't. Oh, no. In clearing the air, you open up. So, okay. So remember in the last reading, it was like, okay, you want, you want this stuff to happen to you because you kind of don't want to have to go through it. You don't want to have to feel it hurts. You're not afraid of it, but you kind of are because it hurts. But you got to go through with it. Energetically, it needs to be purged so you can make way for the good. Here comes that good. Here's that good, that wheel of fortune. And this is the emotional connection that happens after you clear the air, after you open up the lines of communication and talk about, look, this is my thing. I end up doing this. You got to give me a minute. This is truthful conversations addressing issues that need to be addressed, basically. And look at the emotional bonding that comes out of it. Things take a turn for the better because you energetically shifted. You broke the pattern. October. November, Six of Pentacles. I like that. Good. Things being in bed. Oh. Ooh. All right. November, Six of Pentacles for Pisces. November. Oh. <laughs> okay. So either... This is, this is good things all around because we've got a solid, this could be a windfall. I mean, this could be a raise at work. This could be a new position. This is you getting your due. This is you thriving. November is very good for money and for relationship. Um, you are being, for all intents and purposes, exalted and possibly showered with money, attention, your just desserts. Um, this is things being given as they should for you and quite generously so. This could be newfound stability in a relationship. So you find you have this emotional bond that just happened and after the air got cleared in October and you're happy because there's reciprocity and you're emotionally fulfilled in this relationship off to a brand new uh, stable start. And then for your job, because that could have been an issue up here too, this money looks good. Money looks like it stabilizes. So November is going to be a real pivotal month for you for things finally, good Lord, you have to wait for a whole 11 months, finally leveling out. Kind of fun getting there though, especially after you meet this person, because I don't think you were expecting this. And then all of a sudden, holy cow, you did the work and here it comes. This is June. And then November is when things really, it's kind of like a windfall. It feels really like it just sets things to right. You have this talk about things changing for the better and your luck changing. Look at this. This is a windfall of security and and things coming your way that you were due i mean this is oof. that's just two of cups in december for pisces two of cups december pisces seven of wands so you close out the year strong you and your person are united front and you two it's like it's you and me, babe. That's what this is. It's like here you are. I don't think this is about having conflict. I think that after this clearing of the air and we've got this incredible bond and things are just working and going your way and we've got you feeling really strong and connected to your partner. So there you go. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Wow, Pisces. Okay. <laughs> I like it. All right. Oh, there's that Wheel of Fortune we were talking about. So the Magician. Um, did, honestly, this is, we got the Magician here too. This is about like manifesting and bringing things to fruition. And it looks like it really, you know, here's the first hit of that in June. And then here we have November, you clear the air. You know why though? Because you're doing the work. This wouldn't have happened if you didn't clear the air, if you didn't, okay, fine. And then deal with it because you've certainly been thinking about it long enough it'd, it'd be nice if something came up from that you know all right some some learning and some wisdom huh 
What else for Pisces for 2020 Pisces? <laughs> there it is. Make your dreams re real. That's what we we're talking about manifesting. And there it is. Somehow you you done did it. I mean, that you this is doing the work and trying to figure out the relationship stuff and realize or feed thinking, you know, I don't, I want to take my chances by myself. I just can't keep carrying this around anymore. But then you can't help it sometimes. You beat yourself up. You feel guilty. You, uh, but you did it. You end up meeting somebody that wants what you want. And you think you got to control it. And they're like, no, 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 not with me. Let's talk about this. Let's keep the lines open here. Don't withdraw from me. Stay present. Talk to me. And look what happens in it. I, okay. This, this October, November, December, Feel solid, feel strong. Whoopsie. That was for Pisces 2020. 2020. You are destined to succeed. Well, now that's an awesome sentiment. I'll take that. Okay. So this <laughs> Six of Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles, and then we got the Talisman. Yeah. This is a game. This year is going to be a game changer for you. We've got the Wheel of Fortune twice. You're due. It's time. That's good. But it's also happening because, again, you did the work. You didn't shy away from it. You avoided it long enough. Now you did it. Set things in motion. Went after what you wanted. Found it. That's for Pisces. Three of Wands, which could speak to this person being at a distance. It could also be you put this in motion and you're getting big returns on the work you did energetically. And then we've got Justice. <laughs> okay, so doubling down on that, that's all about, yeah, things are as they should be. You have balanced out your karma or it's balanced effort. If nothing else, it's balanced energy. Now, why? Because you had little faith. You basically faced your fears, faced your issues, and we're working on it. Didn't resolve it, didn't it? But you faced it. You, you weren't running anywhere. You weren't being passive. You started to get proactive and energetically that shifted things and things are as they should be now and you're getting big returns on that. Success, making your dreams a reality. Not too shabby. I have no idea where to put this. And I think I ran out of those little doohickeys. Okay. Guess I can do like that. All right. What else for Pisces? For 2020 Pisces. 2020 Pisces. Two of Pentacles reversed. Okay, what is that? One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Nine of Pentacles. Excellent. So things were not balanced before. They were kind of hectic, kind of chaotic, but in doing again, say it with me, the energetic work, you have a new sense of security. You've got, you're grounded and th this is integrity coming out of imbalance and things being chaotic and you kind of writing that like setting that to rights, you doing what it takes to figure out your issues that you've been thinking about so darn long, actually trying to make sense of it, really working on that and putting things back in balance. That's, that's pretty cool. And we've got an undercurrent of your money balancing out also because you aren't scattering your focus anymore you're getting back to basics you're getting back to focusing on yourself and everything changes because you're taking back control in your life you're being proactive about your best self like your best future and that ha that has a ripple effect and this is also about your money coming back under your control like not frittering your money away so there's an undercurrent of financial stability here for you too this year pisces just saying all right, I hope this was helpful. Um, yay, I'm <laughs> kind of bummed that you have to wait to, for things to really gel till the end of the year, but it's always a learning curve, right? Got to put the work in. <laughs> okay, thank you for stopping by. Uh, love and luck to you. 
happy 2020 and I hope to see you in the next reading. You take care.